probably surprises no one that a grown man talking to an iPad home alone with just cats during the day is probably something of a nerd. And that, in this case, is very true. I have been a science fiction and fantasy nerd as long as I can remember. One of my first memories is going to Star Wars and the original release. My Aunt Dana took me. I think I cried because I couldn't have all the action figures that they had on display. So, one of the things I think about vlogging about sometimes is sci-fi stuff. And one of the things that I've done recently is I guessed... Guest appeared? That doesn't sound right. I guessed it on a friend's uh, podcast talking about the new season of Doctor Who. That got me thinking about things I may want to talk about on my own channel. So, here we go. First thing was, Doctor Who came back. Season 9 of New Who. Peter Capaldi's back for a second season. Jenna Coleman's back, but leaving. Uh, Michelle Gomez is back as Missy slash The Master. I love this episode. It was not perfect by any means. Um, it's not going to probably be in my top ten favorite episodes ever, but there were parts of it that were so compelling that it really elevated the whole thing for me. Um, and really what it comes down to, as discussed on Michael Salomon's podcast, is the whole question of the doctor and is he a good man? And in some ways, the entirety of New Who has been a single arc in some ways, through Eccleston and Tennant and Smith and her and now Capaldi about what the Time War did to this man. It's a PTSD allegory writ large with cute monsters. Um, because whatever happened in the Time War in my personal take on what's happening, is that it messed up the doctor. He's still feeling the implications of things he did, choices he made, and it's shaken him to his core about who he is and how he construes his identity. And I think that's huge. I, I am a huge, you can tell because I squinted, I am a huge fan of Anything that delves into identity politics and identity structure and how we think of ourselves and um, construe ourselves both in moral codes and ethical codes and perception in society. And that's an academic nerdy thing, but it ties very much into the sci-fi nerdy thing because um, I think it's a question that a lot of us sci-fi nerds have dealt with over the years. Who are we? Where do we fit in? How do we construe ourselves in places where we don't quite fit? That brings up one of my favorite exchanges of the episode when Clara and Missy are sitting at that table with the snipers around and the couple with their dog walks through and Missy draws and, you know, Moffat's much better language than my paraphrasing the connection that that couple is Missy and the doctor and the dog is Clara. Because no matter how human the doctor pretends to be or wants to be or acts, he and the master are part of some nearly godlike species with powers and abilities that, frankly, we can't understand. And I really like that callback because it really does get to that he is a good man because he tries to be a good man and tries to do the right thing when he could just as easily be like the Master or like any of the other Time Lords we've dealt with, mostly in the classic series. Um, although for New Who fans, the whole Timothy Dalton, John Sim view of Gallifrey really brought home that the Doctor is a rebel and really does not fit in among his own people. And that whole thing with he doesn't fit in with his people, but he can never be human. That's just, that, that's wow material. The other thing I was going to touch on briefly, um, although I'm sure I could go on about Doctor Who for hours, but just that the start of that arc this season and I really hope that's where they're going. Um, 
I'm very excited for that because I think I know where it's going to go. I think it's going to be him rediscovering that who he is um, and maybe lightening things up a little bit um, in a Capaldi fashion, which is never going to be like Smith light, obviously, but um, more of a classic Doctor Who where it's less of his personal drama and more saving people from monsters. And that's, um, I'm not saying I don't want the personal drama. I'm just, I'm ready for us to, eat, for the doctor to evolve a little more and get, get what he needs done to move past this point into something new. Um, so I'd already said onto something new and then I talked about Doctor Who some more, but the other genre fiction thing I wanted to touch on was the Emmy Awards were last night. Tatiana Maslany was nominated for Best Actress. She did not win. Viola Davis did. She most certainly deserves it. And it's amazing to see, sad and amazing, that she was the first black woman to win this because um, it says something about the roles that we're putting out there and the opportunities we're giving actresses, I mean, in general. Um for actress of any stripe, any, uh, for, of any ethnicity, um, age and pay are already limiting factors on their career. Um, for actors of color, it just brings home even more that the jobs aren't there, the roles aren't there. Um, <clears throat> but that said, Maslani did not win. I can't be mad about that. Um, as, you know, as a genre nut, I would love to be, um, I really think what she did is very special. Um, through all the seasons of Orphan Black, both the hits and the misses, and by the misses we mean Tony, um, the hits and the misses, she pulls off completely different characters with acting. And, I mean, you normally don't know if I'm joking because I have such a dry sense of humor and such a monotone, but I'm not with that. She she acts. She changes the mannerisms and the cadence and the body language. I guess that would be mannerisms. And changes up things so you can believe these are completely separate people who happen to come from the same genetic stock. I continue to think, though, that it's a bit of a leap for Emmy voters. Um, both because it's a science fiction show and... A lot of people just have a negative view of science fiction shows. They think it's all just running around screaming on a blue screen as they're chased by Sharknados. Um, and there's really, there can be really good content out there. Um, sorry, I just had this branching idea in my head as happens sometimes because <clears throat> I was thinking about the cost of science fiction and our expectations and it's kind of a shame that a classic Doctor Who can't really be made these days, that people won't have a suspension of disbelief unless the CGI and the explosions and the miniatures and everything is perfect. And I really wish there was more of an opportunity for a Buck Rogers and a Jason, a Star Command, and the things I watched as a kid to be out there for people today to watch um, with lower budgets because there are a ton of creative people who can make this stuff. Just the the viewership is kind of jaded, I feel, speaking of my own nerdy community. And we, we have such high expectations. It's both science fiction and then her role. I don't think people understand without having been fans of the series and having watched it exactly what she's doing. I think they're picturing, and again, this is purely speculation on my part, but I think they're picturing your average soap opera, evil twin kind of setting, where it's the same person in a wig, and they don't, in an Emmy reel, they're not getting the, the depth of the characterization for every single one of these well-acted clones. Um... Which makes it sound like I'm mad at them. Like I'm saying they don't understand and they're they're too short-sighted. I'm disappointed in a sense, but when you're going somewhere outside the mainstream of 
television of entertainment, it, it's harder to have that buy-in from the general public. And when you're something as seemingly odd as one woman playing nine different characters or whatever it's up to now, um, there's a curiosity or a quirk fact. I can't say it in a way that doesn't sound like I'm disappointed or mad or bothered by it, but the truth is I'm really not. I'm, I, it may be years of my expectations being battered have just left them so low, or it may be that I understand the nature of the genre business, being a writer, being a, I guess just a writer. I was going to try to come up with something else, but I just write. Being a genre fiction writer, I kind of understand that um, there's, for the people that love us, they love it. For the people that don't, um, there's some hardcore biases to overcome. So, Maslani did well. I'm glad for the mainstream attention, but uh, I, the loss is the loss, and um, I think it says more about genre fiction as a whole and what we in the community can do to make it more approachable than about any judgment of her acting. So, two quick thoughts on the world of nerddom. Um, third quick thought would probably be something about Destiny, but I've not downloaded The Taken King yet because um, that costs money and we don't do things that cost money right now. So, um, I'll probably have a Destiny rack up, wrap up in my next time around. So, any comments about Orphan Black, Doctor Who, anything you want to talk about, feel free to put them below. Uh, I'm usually hurting for entertainment, so I will be responding. Thank you, everyone.